Hi, this is Runa and you're listening to the Chainsmakers podcast where we share tips, insight, tools and stories from other Chainsmakers designed to motivate you to become the change you want to see in your world. Make sure you join our Chainsmakers community at runamagnus.com forward slash podcast. And now, this is your time to sit back, relax and enjoy. Yes. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. It's Runa here, the uh, CEO of The Changemakers, and another episode from another fantastic Changemaker, uh, a woman who is um, doing something miraculous in her field. Uh, well, I'm talking about Anna Goldstein. She is an NYU certified business and life coach. She is an athlete and an author of Self-Transformational Guide. Awaken your source. Now, Anna, she is helping women all over the world discover how to take a leap of faith from unfulfilling corporate career to a life of passion. That is a huge promise, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, and welcome to the Change Makers podcast, by the way, so that I introduce you or at least welcome you correctly thank but tell you tell me this sounds to me like i am talking to someone who had to take a leap of faith from an unfulfilling corporate career into a life of purpose am i right so you know i think that when you're pursuing what you want there's always some type of leap of faith because we're so attached to what we want mm. that you know, there's, we have to have faith in it and we have mm -hmm. to take a leap if we want to really expand into what it is that we want. Mm -hmm. So, you know, fear is the number one thing that stops us, right? So, you know, we're so conditioned that we're supposed to work a certain way in our society and in our culture. And we're taught that this is what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go out and get a job. So then to pursue what you really want requires you to, to, embrace fear and really take that leap of faith. So I actually didn't really have quote unquote, a corporate career, mm -hmm. believe it or not. My parents didn't either. I never saw it, but I absorbed that from the culture. And I thought that's what I was supposed to do. So I tried to pursue that path. I tried to get a nine to five job. I tried to build my resume. And what happened was I kept either getting fired or, or wanting to quit. And so within eight years, I had 10 different jobs. And that's really where I had to have a moment with myself of like, okay, I really had to get clear on what it was that I wanted and trust myself enough to do something to step out into the unknown that nobody around me was doing. Mm. Wow. Talking about a leap of faith. So what, I mean, yeah, okay. So you're in all these different type of jobs and you kind of like, I can, I can just feel the dilemma you're in at the moment. How did you, how do you discover your purpose then? Yeah, it's a great question. Well, pain usually leaves us to leads us to our purpose, right? Mm. There's some pain is an awakening moment because it's telling you, hmm, there's something that you're not paying attention to. Yeah. So it was in that moment where I was I felt so defeated. I felt like there was something wrong with me because I just felt like I couldn't figure this part of my life out and it was affecting every area of my life. So I really had to start to pay attention to what it was that I really loved, what it was that really lit me up. And it sounds so simple and it typically is something that's really simple, but simple doesn't necessarily mean easy. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I always had a passion for people. I just didn't know how to turn that into something that I would get paid to do. Right. And so I actually had read a book several years ago on life coaching mm -hmm. and I kind of brushed it off and put it aside. But it wasn't until that moment of pain where I came back to that moment of, you know what, this is what I really want to do. And I just don't have the courage. And what I actually did was I seeked somebody who was doing yeah. what I wanted to do. I contacted a coach and I yeah. said, hey, can I work for you so I can learn from you and see if I actually like that? And that was the first time in my life that I felt excited. Like I felt really yeah. alive yeah. when I had reached out to someone who was doing what I wanted to do. Yeah. So it has to do with about going out, out of your comfort zone and bringing in that excitement uh, yeah. gives you a clue that your purpose is already there. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. I, I, I can come in, in, in terms with that. 
my, for sure. So I think personally, and of course, this is my personal view and, and uh, the change makers view as well. And, and I think, no, we're not definitely not the only one on this world thinking, hey, this planet is really changing. I mean, it's just all the structures that we're used to have. Like you just mentioned yourself, you looked at, oh, this is how I think I'm supposed to do. This is what I'm supposed, you know, you're getting the signals out there. But all of that has really collapsed. And I'm just talking about in the last maybe 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And now what we're, you know, the life that we're right when we are recording this, where uh, I still get goosebumps from the speech that Oprah Winfrey did on the Golden Globe. And you, you can just, you feel it in the air that it's just even more change is about to happen. So all of that, as I see, and what you're saying is for people out there to be able to face their fear and understand their purpose, what do you see the outcome of that will be into the world? I mean, what, what, what differences is it going to make for them? Yeah. I mean, you mentioned Oprah, right? Mm -hmm. And so we can feel it, right? As you mentioned also, like you can feel that she's so connected with her heart, with her mm. passion and her purpose that we can actually feel it. Like we're not disconnected from one another. We're not separate from, yeah. you know, the, the way that our mind perceives the world as we're separate. But we could, like, if you really tap into that, you could feel her speech, right? Mm. And from that, like that's massive. She's look what she's been able to overcome in her own life, yeah. the challenges and obstacles, because she's so connected to a purpose that's much greater than her, yeah. right? And so that impact that Oprah has is extraordinary, you know? Like we all feel it. So mm -hmm. when you're really in living in alignment with your purpose, I mean, it sounds so cliche, but we really are able to contribute to make the planet a better place. Mm -hmm. And your purpose doesn't have to be this, you know, extraordinary thing like Oprah, right? No. You know, it can be as simple as, you know, an act of kindness during the day, right? Because, you know, your purpose can can be, you know, your career and that can be your contribution, but it might also just be being a mother, right? That, you know, I shouldn't say just being a mother because that's mm -hmm. a very big role, but... Mm -hmm. However you are contributing in a very conscious way, right? A conscious way, meaning that you understand your actions have consequences and that you're aware of the consequences, mm, right? You understand your actions have consequences and that you are. Wow. Big. Okay. Go on. Yeah. yeah. So it's making those conscious choices that, yeah. so that you can create positive change, right? When we're unconscious, it's possible that we're creating some positive change. But we're more likely to create positive change when we are more conscious, when we are more aware. And what that means is more self-aware and more broad awareness of those around us, right? Mm -hmm. What are we, how are we actually affecting those, those people around us? And there's been studies that show that when we're happy, that does have a ripple effect. That mm -hmm. affects our planet as a whole on an energetic level. Yeah. So for... For leaders, now our listeners are leaders in all aspects of their lives, uh, people who want to make a positive change in their environment, whether they are leading their companies or their organization or a team or, or even leading themselves, if you think about it. For them to be able to open up the space for their team to discover their purpose, I envision a lot of them go into the fear of, well, I might, they might find out that their purpose has nothing to do with my purpose or the purpose of this organization or the purpose of this business or whatever, and mm -hmm. not doing a thing. What, what is your take on that? Well, that's okay. I mean, to have that fear is natural, right? Yeah. We, we all have some fear of change and some fear of loss. I mean, yeah. that's, that's part of our wiring. And so to be a real leader is to be able to face those fears and to have the courage, you know, and if you, the more people that you have on your team that really are aligned mm -hmm. with your purpose and your bigger mission, obviously the more you, your outcome is going to be affected by that. Right. So, you know, what I want to say to, to leaders is don't always just look at a resume, right? Or don't yeah. always just look at qualifications. Passion speaks volumes. And if somebody is really passionate, 
even if they might not have all the necessary quote unquote, you know, standard things that you're looking for, be a little bit open. I, I, I recently had the honor of being in the presence of Sarah Blakely, who's one of my favorite entrepreneurs. She's the creator of Spanx. And one of the things that she said about her hiring, I mean, she built an extraordinary yeah. billion dollar business and she owns a hundred percent of it. No, no investors. And one of the things she said about hiring was she hires people that what she calls quote unquote is athletes, right? People who wow. have talent, yeah. people who have passion, right? Yeah. Because she knows that if somebody's like that, that they can, they can you learn, right? Yeah. And, and it's important. Passion is such an important piece because that's really what's going to speak the loudest. That's yeah. what's really yeah. going to make people show up. That's really what's going to make people go the extra mile, yeah. right? Is really having people that do believe in your purpose, do believe yeah. in your mission. Yeah. So don't be afraid of that. Even though it is, it's scary, you know, don't be afraid of, you know, losing something that maybe isn't so aligned with your bigger mission. Yeah. 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 You're, yeah. I'm with you on that one. Totally. I'm with you on that one. The world that you want to create, I sometimes say, you know, what is it that you want? What is it in the world that you want to see different? What is the, the world that you want to live in? And what is your role in that mm. world? Where would you say your role is in this world? I love this question. This was such a beautiful question. You know, I think about this a lot because I have a two and a half year old son. So I often think about, you know, what kind of world do I want to create for him, mm. right? Mm. Not only just my clients and so on and so forth, but something that I think is really important that we're not really taught growing up is failure, right? And mm. something that I really want to teach my son is, you know, we put so much pressure on ourselves, and that pressure constricts us and it makes us live in more of a box. And you know, when, when I watch my son learn new things, I watch him mess up and try again and mess up and try again until he gets it. And he doesn't know the difference, right? Mm -hmm. Because he's a child and he doesn't have the ability yet to judge himself, right? Mm -hmm. But we, as adults, we stumble and then we get so afraid and we contract. And we're so afraid of failing, not only for how we might judge ourselves, but how others might view us. Mm -hmm. And I really would love to see a world where, we can be open with our faults, that we can yeah. be more vulnerable and more forgiving and more um, able to embrace trying and failure as a part of success rather than, as, rather than you know, something that we should be punished for or looked down mm -hmm. upon or you know, judged for, right? Yeah. That we can live in a world where we can encourage growth, that we can encourage trying more than failure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By being that, by being authentic and being as open about our failures as much, as much as our successes, we are opening up for a space that is much, much kinder, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Much more compassionate. Much more compassionate. And I think that's where you, you're right on the top of that. That's where we feel we're connected and we're not isolated, lonely, human beings, we're actually part of the, we're all on this journey together. Yeah. And there's so much beauty in the struggle. We can't bypass it. You know, I mean, yeah. look, I didn't get here today without having so much pain. Yeah. You know, I didn't have, you know, I, I, I care about people's happiness because it's something I've struggled with. Right. Yeah. And it's something that I'm going to, you know, try to figure out for the rest of my life. It's never ending. And I want to be able to give more because I learned certain things, right? And so, you know, the struggle is really part of the journey. We can't bypass it or think that it's just like a linear straight line and we're going to absolutely be able to bypass failure. Every, anyone who's ever been successful will tell you that mm -hmm. failure is important and we learn the most from those yeah. moments. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more on that one. And that's the beauty of actually when you go through the failure, knowing this is actually teaching me something. This is teaching me something so that I can really live and really be present in my success. So that mm -hmm. doesn't go by as well without noticing. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Anna, love having this conversation with you. We're going to be putting on our show notes information about how and to go to your website, how to download your e-guide and what, what else is there on the website that our audience will be able to say? Yeah. So I have a free workshop 
which mm-hmm. is how to make money doing what you love. It's a three-part video series with downloadable worksheets, absolutely free. You can go there and just enter your name and email address and you can participate in that. Oh, fantastic. That sounds like something really different. Anna, we have not finished our talk. I know that there is more to purpose than what we just talked about. And I would love to have another opportunity, maybe even face-to-face, whether it's you coming to Iceland or me being in D.C. where we are, or whatever, where we use the technology. But nevertheless, I want to say thank you for sharing your story and for sharing your wisdom into a life that is more filled with purpose. Thank you so much. Was this podcast of value for you? I sure hope so. If so, feel free to share the love and give us your generous review on iTunes or Stitcher. And remember that you can always go to runamagnus.com to find out more about the change makers and how we can help you drive the change you want to see in your world.